Hello and welcome to our season 7 finale for Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. Before we get started, what are we drinking? Oh, we're drinking Near Dark Czech Dark Lager. It's been our tradition the last few years to do a Q&A session for yep. our season finale. And for those of you who submitted questions, thank you very much. So our first question here is by Mr. Jack-O-Lanterns. <laughs> Okay, so he asked, if each of you were to make your own movie, any genre and budget was not an option, who would you cast as your leading man and leading lady? I think we've been asked something similar before. Um, leading man, you know, if, if he's still alive, fucking either Kurt Russell or Tom <laughs> Atkins. Yeah, <laughs> of course, yeah. Leading lady is tough because, again, there's so many good ones. If I want to make money off the fucking movie, I'd get Jenna Ortega. Because yeah. she's a hot commodity, man. So Scarlett or, Johansson? I get uh, Mia Goth in there because, again, she's <laughs> kind of a hot commodity. Yeah. And uh, if she's in a horror movie, people will see it. So you're going to make money. Yeah, you're gonna yeah, yeah. Get that box office, baby. Yeah, yeah. And they're all good actresses, too. So it's like not like you're getting them just for looks and star value. It's They'll do a good job. For horror movies and stuff, I like sort of normal looking people. Older guys too, yeah, right? That's why you get Tom Atkins. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't care for a lot of, you know, young people like nowadays. They just don't do it for me, yeah. you know, but... Because we're getting older. <laughs> but they just look, they just don't look realistic. Yeah. Now, you know what I mean? It's But anyways, uh, James Brolin. <laughs> I'd, <lo> <laughs> I'd like to get in there for the leading man. One actress you'd never see much of anymore is uh, Rooney Mara. Vicky from... Rooney? <laughs> Jiminy Jillikers. Jiminy Jillikers. The girl with the dragon tattoo. Oh, yeah, yeah. You never yeah. really see her anymore. Yeah. So I'd like to see her in something. So this next question comes from Patrick Doherty. I think we're pronouncing that right. If not, <laughs> you can so. correct us somehow. <laughs> um, <laughs> would like to know, excuse me, I'm reading off my laptop. Um, recently, he said he recently rewatched Halloween 3 and gotta say, I think the critics were right the first time. Mm. So I guess this gentleman did not like Halloween 3. Oh. Well, fuck <laughs> you. Is there a movie which was initially dismissed as a dud that has become reappreciated over the years, but in our opinion, still sucks. Right. Um, that's a tough one. Yeah, it's um, a tough one. It's a tough one. I was looking at some movies and like, okay, well, I don't like this movie, and a lot of people do, and it's considered a cult classic. But it actually did well. It wasn't a dud. Mm -hmm. So to find a dud that's become popular now that we still don't like, it takes some research for yeah, this one. Yeah. It's like for the box office side of it. Both decided maybe uh, Return of the Living Dead Part 2. Yeah. That was kind of a dud. It didn't do great. It didn't do what the first one did. And people seem to really love that movie. It's kind of gotten an appreciation. But I still think it fucking blows. Yeah, it sucks. It's, yeah. it's, it's a hard movie to watch. It fucking drags. And it's like the, the effects, though are the best ever yeah, like they're yeah. just fucking just top-notch but the movie around it oh, yeah, it kind of sucks like, the, the, the characters suck you don't it's nothing like the first no, one like you're not, not at all you, man we, we i've watched the first return of the living dead about four times in the last two months <laughs> yeah. like that's some um, that's how good that fucking i watched part of it again yesterday <laughs> and we just watched it a week ago yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, that fuck? just goes to show you yeah that movie Phenomena. Argento one. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, I was thinking that. I'm not quite sure how that did in the box office. I think it did well, though, because it's a, quite the well-known movie. Remember, we tried watching it, and we just we couldn't get into it. Yeah, We're like, yeah, oh, it couldn't it get into it. Fucking drags, you know? It's like, ah. That was, that was another one I was thinking yeah. about. Great cast and yeah, all but that just, kind of stuff, and great soundtrack. It's just kind of like, oh. Yeah, it kind of doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. So Gonzalo Valdez wrote to us and he asked, Name your fave. Witch horror subgenre flick, French horror flick, Aussie horror flick, American horror flick, Italian horror flick, German horror flick, South American horror flick, <laughs> Mexican horror flick, favorite horror actress and actor, and why? <laughs> boy, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't <want> to start. <laughs> Favorite witch horror movie? Um, 
Superstition's fucking good. Super, I'd say Suspiria. Yeah, Suspiria yeah. is the top, yeah. top of the line. And, you know, The Witch is really good, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Witchfinder General <laughs> is good with uh, Vincent Price. Yeah. <laughs> French horror flick. French, yeah. Probably High Tension. Yeah, High Tension. Yeah. Um, I had Baby Blood. Yeah. Oh, yeah, which, that's great, too. Which yeah. we covered. Aussie horror flick. Fuck, well, Wolf Creek, that's Aussie, right? Yeah. Wolf Creek is pretty damn good. And if you can call it horror, Awake and Fright, man, that's... Yeah. It's, it's not really a horror film, but it kind of is, but I fucking love that movie. And we got to cover it. Yeah, big time. And we should almost do something a little different with that, like get fucking wasted or something. <laughs> and then do it. <laughs> and then, or, or kind of like wa like do it kind of like a watch along and Maybe. drink along or something would be sure. right with Awake and Fright. Cause sure. You can't watch that movie and not drink, like... Oh, it just makes you want to fucking booze <laughs> oh, yeah. hard, man. The beer looks so good in that movie, too. Like, when he's... Yeah. <laughs> and, like, the, when they're in that giant hall and that yeah. sheriff guy or whatever, he's, he's all... super yeah. pounding him back. <laughs> and then he's all waiting for him to drink, too. Yeah. He's, he's, he's all hesitant. And then he has to down yeah. it, like... Oh, there's that scene where he comes in from the desert or whatever, <laughs> yeah. and he goes straight to the bar, and they pour him <laughs> that cold beer, and he's... Guzzles uh, it, you're like, oh, uh, yeah. my God. you're like salivating watching. We've all, we've all been in that situation. <laughs> Italian horror flick. Again, Spiria's up there for me. Again, another Argento ten Tenebre, Tonabre. I don't know, I'm sure it's properly pronounced, is really fucking good. Yeah, yeah. Um, House with the Laughing Windows was really good yeah. when we reviewed that one. That was really one. good, yeah. That, yeah, that was, a, that was awesome. German horror flick. I don't, I'm not sure I've seen a German horror flick. Nosferatu, 1979. Was oh, good. I guess that's German. Yeah, that's an easy out. That's an easy but one. It's an out. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did <laughs> did my research on this a little bit, and actually I have seen one, A Tenderness of the Wolves, which I actually have written down for us to review. Okay, yeah. Um, that's a really good movie. It's about a cannibal. Favorite horror actress and actor and why? Well, I think we kind of answered that in the last question is who we would get to yeah. star in our own horror movie, kind of. Donald Pleasance, I think. Just the amount that we quote the guy <laughs> alone. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, actress? Oh, man. man you might, I might have to go with, like, it's a cop out, but might have to go with like Jamie Lee Curtis. But, but, you know, between like Prom Night, Terror Train, Road games, Halloween, like yeah, she's like, in a lot. Fuck, like she's in a lot of great movies, and uh, Amy Steele is pretty good. Steele, Steele, yep. Grande's Graveyard. He asked us, "Are you guys fans of any Lucky McGee films? If so, which ones? Also, are you guys into Japanese horror at all? Again, if so, which titles? Love your show. Keep up the fantastic work. Well, thank you very much." Yeah, I've only seen one movie by that uh, director, and I think it's May. I've seen May, and I liked it, but it's one of those movies I've only watched the once, so I guess I didn't yeah. like it enough to rewatch it a bunch of times. Right. But, but yeah, I've seen the one movie. For me, I, I watched The Woman. Mm -hmm. I thought the same thing. I thought yeah. it was really good, but, yeah. you know, ah, I didn't love it, so I mean, I yeah. probably won't get back to it yeah. again. Japanese horror, like, yeah, there's a lot of good Japanese horror, and sometimes I get the lines blurred, right? Like, Asian horror and in general, kind of, to me, is like all Japanese, even though it isn't. Generally, I don't really watch that much of that yeah. stuff. And like Japanese, specifically Japanese, no, I, I don't really, I can't say I've seen much. Yeah, I haven't even seen the original Ringyu, you know, it's, I have it, it's over there, I just haven't yeah. watched it yet, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard that it's far better. Yeah. The American version, I only watched it like, for the first time, like what? a year ago and I actually didn't mind it I didn't think it was fantastic I liked it more the second time than the first time Dr. Dog Toffee would like to know if John Carpenter Kurt Russell and Tom Atkins got together for <laughs> one last movie what would you want it to be a sequel a prequel or something original well, hmm. I'd say something original because I'm done with sequels and prequels. Yeah, I know Hollywood's fucking ruined yeah. Yeah. that. And you know, neither of those guys, Kurt Russell or Tom Atkins, they don't even need to be the leading man. They can be in there, but yeah. you know, just like as a cameo or whatever. But no, no sequels or prequels with John Carpenter, Tom Atkins, or Kurt Russell. Let's, yeah. let's do something new, baby. Yeah, yeah. I think Carpenter's only really done one slasher. If he ever did, I'd love to see him do another slasher and finish out, finish his career on a slasher, kind of like how he opened. Yeah. And I'd love to see maybe 
Kurt Russell and Tom Atkins being like a partner. They're they're both maybe these Sheriffs? whacked out oh, no, these, killers. Yeah, like these fucking whacked out old dudes killing. That'd be cool to see Kurt Russell as that kind of character. Yeah, yeah. that'd be neat. Yeah, and like yeah. I know Tom Atkins always plays like the the sheriff or the yeah. cop and all yeah. that shit. I want to see him fucking the bad guy. Yeah, that'd be neat. Yeah, totally flip everything. Yeah, flip it all. Our next question is by the second last starfighter. <laughs> I guess he didn't quite beat the high score on the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I would like to know in terms of horror subgenres, which of you find gents enjoy more? Sci-fi horror, so like alien, event horizon type stuff. Yeah. Or animal attack horror, so like Jaws, Kingdom of the Spiders. Yeah. Stuff like that. Um, Man, I don't know. That's a good question. I think probably the sci-fi horror. I think so for me too. It's more cerebral yeah. usually, and it's it, it sticks with you more. I think the sci-fi movies and all that can be a lot more suspenseful. Yeah. So they can, yeah. It's like you can get onto yeah. the edge of your seat a lot more. Animal attack ones are fun. Yeah. For schlock purposes usually, but man, the sci-fi ones, it's just they're better mm -hmm. films usually. Yeah. 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 So Favorite sci-fi horror, man. That's. Oh, fuck. There's so many good ones. Um, like Invasion of the Body Snatchers, the 78 version is yeah. pretty fucking good. Animal Attacks Horror, man. Kingdom of the Spiders, <laughs> I think, is just fucking... I, I love Kingdom of the Spiders. Yeah. It's so fun. And I'm going to put that over Jaws. Let's uh, call a spade a spade here. Jaws... It's fucking overrated. Overrated mm -hmm. and boring. Yeah. Uh, give me a Kingdom of the Spiders. Mm -hmm. Give me William Shatner over fucking Richard Dreyfuss any day. Yeah, or, or fucking <laughs> uh, Orca. Like, yeah. I'd watch Orca way more than Over Jaws. Jaws. Yeah, me too, for sure. I like Piranha. Fucking Piranha was good, Piranha's man. really good, too. Yeah. <laughs> Super fun. Yeah. The next question comes from na 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 Jordies. That's quite... Yeah. Handle <laughs> yeah. He asks, if you could choose a Disney movie to put a dark spin on and make it horror, what would it be and how would you do it? Oh, that's, See, again, that's a tough one because a lot of those early Disney movies are dark. Yeah. They're yeah. already dark. I know. I know. Um, and they're already kind of fucking horror. Maybe Pocahontas. Because <laughs> that story, like, because, like, let, let's, let's, you know, what really fucking happened is this woman was kidnapped and raped and shit like that. And they turned it into a fucking, like, ooh, singing, and I love that, yeah. that blonde guy. If they were to tell the real story, it would be a horror movie. <laughs> yeah. You know, they kidnapped this native woman and raped her and made her a fucking slave and married some white guy and they, they glorified it, you know? Yeah. That's a horror movie. Pretty fucking, yeah. <laughs> I had maybe Toy Story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The toys would Evil come to yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be great, yeah. <laughs> Goofy. I was thinking Goofy to be like, <laughs> to, <laughs> yeah, where he, that's all like a facade. And he like, he does that to lure children. Yeah. Kind of like John Wayne Gacy. And yeah. here he's like some fucking sadistic serial killer. Here's those two buck teeth like right into people's heads. <laughs> yeah. It all, the teeth all come through the <laughs> through bottom of your chin. <laughs> Thad Kissick who is one of our new patrons oh, thank you on very Patreon. Much. Yep. So again, we don't plug it often, but if you want to help support the channel, join us there and we'll review a movie of your choice. Mm -hmm. uh, he would like to know, he says it's probably a tall order, but it actually wasn't. Who's your favorite drunk character from a horror movie? <laughs> right. And at first it was like, oh, that might be hard, but actually, no, it's not hard. It kind of came to me like that. For me, it's, it's Burke. From The Exorcist, when he's pissed drunk oh, at the party. Fuck. Bloody butchering Nazi, Nazi pig. <laughs> I'm Swiss! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Never went bowling with the gobbles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nazi bastard. <laughs> there appears to be an alien pubic hair in my gin. Never seen it before in my life. Have you? <laughs> you see him go to pick it out and then they cut? <laughs> That's great. What's for dessert? <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I love Burke. He's one. He's my favorite drunk character in a horror movie. Yeah. Like oh, by far, by far, like, yeah. But you had another one. Yeah, I had another one. John Strode from Halloween Six. I yeah. think is pretty. He's a pretty good contender. He's already an asshole before yeah, drinking. Then he gets all drunk. <laughs> shows up back home. And shirts all <laughs> untucked. And he all runs over that bike <laughs> in the driveway too. 
And then the way he dies, yeah. too, it's like, oh. Halloween 6 really needed more John Strode. It really, <laughs> it really did. Like, that movie would have benefited from less cult mm. and more drunken John, John Strode. Strode. <laughs> yeah. Kent Davis. Um, A Winnipegger. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He asked, what's our favorite horror movie soundtrack that isn't John Carpenter? Yeah, and that's a tough one. I think I have two answers. One for how effective it is, mm -hmm. and one for just listenability, you know? That's a word, listenability? <laughs> it could be. I don't well, know. Whatever. Um, so my first one is Suspiria. Is fucking, I love that yeah. soundtrack. And yeah. man, is that effective? That's probably the first movie score I heard that actually, the music scared me. Yeah, creeps you out. Creeps you out. But a soundtrack I listen to often, mm -hmm. as far as just listening to when you're like cleaning the fucking house and stuff, would yeah. be the Day of the Dead soundtrack. <laughs> yeah. I love that soundtrack. Man, did that grow on me over time. Oh, big yeah. time. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same way too. One of my favorites is actually uh, the Omega Man soundtrack. <laughs> all, that, all that 70s, <laughs> all that <laughs> funk music. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know when you get all drunk sometimes and you'll be sending me through Messenger all these tracks from the Omega Man soundtrack. I love like, the Omega like, Man. I know Justin's a drunk and he's sending me Omega Man. Uh, another one, the Manhunter soundtrack. Oh, I listen is, to that all the time yeah, too, yeah. Yeah, that's... It's not so much a score though, those are just like tunes, like songs, yeah. but yeah. yeah. Another one too, like... Um, I'd like to do an episode maybe on stuff like this, like se not necessarily scores, yeah. but music that was like, you know, from bands or whatever, yeah. songs that were picked for a, a, a movie that fit perfectly. Right. You yeah. know, and for me, like the Return of, Li of the Living Dead soundtrack, like all those punk songs that they perfect that they picked for the movie work perfectly in every scene they're put in yeah it's so fucking good i can't think of another uh, of, of a movie that used pre pre-recorded music by a band or by bands that fit so fucking well yeah, yeah. you know how many times can you hear like in a vietnam movie fucking the jimi hendrix yeah, like, or uh, or CCR. Yeah, it's or... like oh, another uh, panoramic shot. They're flying over fucking Vietnam, and you hear CCR or Hendrix. Like, oh, that's never been done before. <laughs> like, so Billy Van Viggle, I think we pronounced that right. <laughs> I hope so. Would like to know. He's got two questions. What is the most overlooked horror director, hmm. in our opinion? And uh, for me, just because it's fresh in my brain, we covered a whole bunch of his movies recently. Frank Henenlotter. Yeah. A lot of his movies are fucking top-notch. They're, they're great, and they're not really well-known besides in the horror community. Mm -hmm. And they're fucking solid films, yeah. you know? Yeah. Mine was Pete Walker, the yeah. director of the uh, the comeback, British Frightmare, yeah. um, and a whole bunch of others. House of Whipcord yeah, and all, all that, that cool shit. Yeah, yeah, those are all great movies, yeah. Yeah, and I think he's super underrated. And Like, his movies, just like uh, Frank Henenlotter, they, have, they all have an underlying tone of some kind. Right, there's a that something connects them to, all. Like yeah, this theme that kind of connects them all. There's yeah. something to say in yeah. the movies, right? Yeah. Which is really cool. Bill said for him it was Terrence Fisher who directed all those Hammer yeah, Wars. Yeah, and yes, yeah, that's, that's another good answer too. He's yeah. really because man, like he really kind of he built a legacy, the Hammer legacy. Yeah. you know those Terrence Fisher films, man. Like Hammer wouldn't be Hammer without Terrence Fisher yeah. at, at the helm. Well, and like. Horror wouldn't be horror without yeah. those films. Yeah, that definitely like if you wanna if you wanna look at uh, like a foundation of horror. Yeah, his movies are a pillar. Yeah, they are. You know? yeah. yeah, so yeah, underrated for sure because he was you know before they were talking about masters of horror, he was one of them, mm. and no one ever talked. They talked about Hitchcock and all that stuff, but yeah, yeah what about Terrence Fisher? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. His other question is, what is, in your opinion, our opinion, the most underrated Canadian horror film? Yeah, yeah. And there's I, lots, there's a lot of great Canadian horror films, but... Yeah, I think probably Rituals is probably the one. The one, well, both, I think I agree with you, yeah. Yeah, like, not many people know about that movie. It's gone far under the radar, you know, and yeah. it, that movie really needs to be brought back up. And we yeah. covered that one, and I wish more people would see it, yeah. just because it deserves it. And that's the last question for our season finale Q&A. Yeah. Our end to 2023. Oh, God. And we started this in 27... 
2017. Oh my god! 2017, <laughs> we started this. Crazy to think that we're still doing this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like fuck. We were just up in my bedroom, in my bed, filming a fucking skit. It's like it's like we're like 40 years old and, <laughs> and filming these stupid sketches and doing this shit. It's just when you, it's bizarre, but it's kind of like. It's a way of life. Yeah. <laughs> it's a way of life. <laughs> That's a lot of fun, though. And as long as people keep watching and tuning in. And climbing this fucking mountain, which seems like Everest. Patience, um, Monty. Yeah. Climb the ladder. <laughs> but we'll keep doing it as long as people are watching and commenting and sending us a bit of love here and there. Yeah, and enjoying what we're putting out, right? Yeah. What we're laying down. Next year, we got... A lot of plans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're going to be taking a season break, and we we're talking like it won't be much of a season break because we're still going to be working on <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Even though we're not shooting episodes, we're still working on stuff. Season opener we got to film. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. All sorts of stuff we're going to be working on in between the two seasons, right? So there's... It's not a break. It's a break, but it's not a break. If you can call it pressure, but yeah. it's not really pressure, but that's off, right? Yeah. It's like, you can just kind of pick away at all that shit at your own leisure. Yeah. And anyway, I hate to say, there is sometimes pressure, right? Like, YouTube puts pressure on people to constantly put shit out. When we started posting shorts, YouTube started pushing the channel more. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you can tell. Oh. And they're like, because as you get more, shorts count as views. The more yeah. views you get, the more YouTube pushes you. Right, yeah. So, and you put out, if we put out shorts daily, yeah, it helps. Huh. But then that's more pressure. Yeah, it's more shit it's, to it's, do. it's like, fuck that. The pressure that YouTube puts on you hmm. to put out content to make sure you're not getting stale is kind of ridiculous. It's more pressure on small channels Yeah. than yeah. there are big channels to keep putting shit out well yeah because you're you have to keep yourself out there yeah. right you got to keep it going it's like whoring you're fucking in the red light district you're fucking whoring <laughs> yeah. you, you want a good time you want a date it's basically that's what you're doing <laughs> yeah. no lube yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for all of the views that you guys give us everything you guys watch this is why we do what we do very appreciated We'll see you in 2024. You betcha. And until then, keep drinking.